The Titanic sank early on April 15, 1912 after striking an iceberg. There are many stories of heroism from the Titanic disaster, but the bravery and resourcefulness of one woman helped her and others persevere through the perilous turn of events. This is the story of Margaret Brown, also known as the unsinkable Molly Brown. Margaret was born as Margaret Tobin in Missouri on July 18, 1867 to Irish immigrants. She grew up in a three-room cottage just blocks from the Mississippi River and attended the grammar school run by her aunt, Mary O'Leary. She stopped going to school at the age of 13 to help out her family. In 1886, she married a man named James Joseph or J.J. Brown. At the time of their marriage, J.J. was 31 and Margaret was 19. J.J. Brown was a sharp man and his mining engineering efforts proved instrumental in the exploration of a substantial ore seam at the Little Johnny Mine, leading to the Brown family to acquire great wealth. His employer, the Ibex Mining Company, awarded him 12,500 shares of stock and a seat on the board. The newfound wealth enabled Margaret to fight for the causes she believed in, including juvenile justice, adoption and enforcement of child labor laws, worker rights, particularly in the mining industry, eight-hour work days, and worker safety through the National Trade Union League. She also worked with fellow mates Alice Paul and Alva Vanderbilt Belmont to get the 19th Amendment passed and ensure voting rights for women. In 1902, Margaret and JJ embarked on a world tour that took them through Ireland, France, Russia, India, and Japan, among other places. JJ and Margaret grew apart over time and after 23 years of marriage, they privately signed a separation agreement in 1909. Although they never reconciled, they continued to communicate and care for each other throughout their lives. Margaret became a charter member of the Denver Women's Club whose mission was the improvement of women's lives by continuing education and philanthropy. She became well immersed in the arts and fluent in French, German, Italian, and Russian. The language skills would come in handy later after the sinking of the Titanic. In 1912, Margaret departed on a trip to Egypt, Rome, and Paris with her daughter Helen and friends JJ and Madeline Astor. However, after hearing news of her ill grandson, she decided to return and book passage on the first available ship, the Titanic. Originally, her daughter Helen was supposed to accompany her, but she decided to stay in Paris, where she was a student at the Sorbonne. The Titanic represented new heights in innovation and achievement. The ship was a wonder of modern science built by British White Star Line and weighed 46,000 tons that 882.5 feet long. The ship's builders boasted that the ship was practically unsinkable. Brown was conveyed to the Titanic as a first-class passenger on the evening of April 10 aboard the tender SS Nomadic at Cherbourg, France. The first four days of the voyage were relatively uneventful. Although the ship's captain and crew received numerous warnings of ice in the area during their passage, the Titanic charged ahead. Shortly before midnight on April 14, the Titanic struck ice. Margaret was in her bed, reading a book, and she was thrown to the floor. After hearing increasing activity in the hall, she went out to investigate and was one of the first people to get to the boat deck. But she was not in any of the first lifeboats to be launched. She helped many people to get into the lifeboats before one of Titanic's officers had to force her to board lifeboat number 6. Lifeboat 6 was equipped to hold 65 passengers, However, it pushed off from the Titanic with just 21 women, 2 men, and a 12-year-old boy on board. At approximately 1.55 a.m., Captain Smith ordered all the lifeboats in the water through a megaphone to come back to the Titanic and pick up more passengers. Molly was concerned about the passengers left behind and wanted to go back and rescue them. She was overruled by Quartermaster Robert Hitchens, the man in command of her lifeboat. Hitchens was worried that if the lifeboat was taken back, there was a serious risk of it being sucked under with the Titanic or being swamped by people in the water trying to get in. After several attempts to urge Hitchens to turn back, Brown threatened to throw him overboard. Sources vary as to whether the boat went back and if they found anyone alive. Brown's efforts sealed her place in history regardless. 
At 4.30 in the morning, Margaret saw a flash of light. It was from the approaching ship Carpathia, which was the first to answer the distress call. After some difficulty, Lifeboat 6 pulled up alongside of the Carpathia, and the occupants were pulled aboard one at a time. Margaret, though sore, tired and cold, began to take action. Her knowledge of foreign languages enabled her to console survivors who spoke little English. She distributed extra blankets and supplies gathered by the crew and the passengers of the Carpathia to women who were sleeping in the dining room and corridors. Margaret realized that many women had lost everything – husbands, children, clothes, money, valuables – and needed to start a life in a new country. She rallied the first-class passengers to donate money to help less fortunate ones. Before the Carpathia even reached New York, $10,000 had been raised. Later, after the Titanic investigations and recognition of his efforts, Captain Arthur Henry Rostron of the Carpathia received a Silver Cup award from Molly Brown for his role in the rescue of Titanic survivors. Margaret Brown's experiences on the ship are the most well-known portion of her story. But it's the aftermath of the tragedy and Margaret's role in helping the survivors that placed her in the national limelight for the first time. She helped found the first juvenile court and pushed for better working conditions for laborers. She became immensely popular and she put her fame to good use. She was a self-made woman, something that was not common in that era. However, she was still treated as an outsider by the most elite societies and never got invited to their events. It wasn't until her widely publicized heroism and the Titanic disaster that she was invited to the Sacred 36, a group that included the most elite of the Denver society families. Because of her efforts in France in the First World War, the French bestowed upon her their highest civilian medal. In her later years, Margaret even experimented with acting and continued to travel. She escaped disaster a second time when the hotel she was staying at in Palm Beach, Florida caught on fire. She led other guests to safety down a fire escape. On October 26, 1932, Margaret Tobin Brown died in her sleep in New York City. She is buried next to her husband in the cemetery of the Holy Rood in Westbury, New York. Today, her name is known around the world and her titanic fame has grown. Her house in Denver, Colorado has been converted into a museum and is open to the public. While she is famously known as the unsinkable Molly Brown today, that moniker was never assigned to her while she was alive. It was the product of a 1960 Broadway musical based on her life and its 1964 film adaption which were both entitled The Unsinkable Molly Brown. Thank you for watching. If you found the video interesting, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to Seanvolution for more such content.